guys, I sure come at you today in Rage Shadow Legends with another champion guide, this time Ryan the Conjurer, the second champion that you get from Doom Tower Normal, and she is worth getting. She's so much more and better, I would say, than a substitute, Madam Ceres. Uh, not better than Madam Ceres, per se, but she, she serves a lot of utility that you can't get out of Madam Ceres, namely... She serves as a reviver on your team, albeit not the best revive. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this champion and take a look at her kit. She's right in front of my face. There she is. So first of all, she looks really, really cool. No lore, unfortunately, on Ryan the Conjurer. I do want to hear her backstory because she's a, a triple companion champion with Euros Soul Cage and Akoth the Seared, both also, uh, you know, hard and normal Doom Track champions from Doom Tower. Doom Track? Yeah, sure. It makes sense. Uh, Dark Elf support champion. Force Affinity, as I mentioned, she looks super cool. Like, I love the aesthetics here. The green sword and the red scepter. Uh, really cool cape. Just, just all in all, like, pretty badass looking champion. On the A1, we have a block buffs debuff at a really high 75% land rate. It's not bad for an A1. It's a nice addition to an, a, an already competent kit. On Sweeping Dismissal, her A2 ability, it's a three-turn cooldown, 100% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies. Also has a 100% chance of placing the big version of weakened debuffs on all enemies for two turns. Now, if we compare her to her sister... I just made that up. They're not sisters, but she's the same faction. Madam Ceres, with Midnight Ritual, she's removing all buffs from all enemies and then placing a decreased attack and decreased defense, albeit on a four-turn cooldown. So I do think that Ryan the Conjurer, as kind of maybe a, a mid-game Hydra champion, I think she serves more utility than Madam Ceres in that regard, at least. Uh, because again, it's a three-turn cooldown. Weaken is really nice to have as well. And uh, that buff removal, again, every three turns is great. Not to mention Master of Summons is her revival ability. Revives a dead ally, 50% HP. He fills a turn meter by 50%. Also places a block debuss on them for two turns on a four-turn cooldown. Uh, you know what? I said it wasn't the best revival. It's not the worst, though. You know, that's not bad on a four-turn cooldown from an epic champion. I like that they, she adds the block debuffs. That's not a revival a buff that we get that often. Of course, there are some champions out there who have it, but it, it's few and far between. So it's cool to have that with a 50% turn meter, 50% HP. I will say with 50% HP though, it does leave them pretty susceptible to dying again. That would be the downside. We love to have a strength in or an increased defense or a block damage or anything like that to try to keep them alive afterwards, but beggars can't be choosers. Uh, we have accuracy in all battles by 40. It's not great, but it's not bad. Accuracy or Auras can definitely be helpful, especially in progression of Raid Shadow Legends or heck, anywhere inside the game that you're just, you know, a little bit as shy on a few champions on accuracy. Get that nice little boost up there as well. So her base stats, nothing too crazy, honestly. Nothing too great, nothing that awful either. 17k on the HP and around 1200, 1150 or so uh, is average to below average for a support champion so nothing super alarming but also we'd like it a little bit higher if we uh if we if we you know had our way anyway let me go ahead and show you the build that i have on this champion have i used her recently i thought i did in preparation for today's video and i did so we have her in an arena build that you can also use basically anywhere, okay? Uh, this champion, we do want to have a lot of accuracy for this A2 ability. We also want her to stay alive because, well, I mean, she's a reviver, right? We, we need her to stay alive. Uh, so let's start with how to build her, right? We do want survivability, so defense and HP is going to be important. Uh, ergo, we are totally bypassing and not caring about damage at all from this champion. That means no crit rate, no crit damage. At least it's not going to be a priority by any stretch of the imagination. Accuracy, speed, and survivability are going to be our stat priorities on her. So HP, defense, speed, and again, accuracy. Some resist is nice as well, so she's not CC'd. However, we do have Stone Skin on her. I love Ryan the Conjurer and Stone Skin, especially in the arena. Uh, I think that Stone Skin's the new immunity, right? Uh, I think it's it's really the way to go for even debuffers. Now, granted, if we were running an old school, super, super fast team, 
in the arena, we'd probably just go triple perception, right? Because we want her to be pretty fast. We want her to obviously go before any of our damage dealers on an arena team. Uh, but, you know, I'm still trying to make her as fast as possible. I'm trying to give her at least one turn of stone skin. We're also getting resistance, HP, and defense. So a lot of survivability and even a four set of stone skin. It's just one of the best sets, if not the best set out there in the game for PvP. But it can also be very applicable to PvE and conducive to great survivability right so stone skins great not just a pvp set is the point that i'm trying to make and struggling to get by to you guys <laughs> so we have a speed on the boots we have a perception set accuracy on the chest that's going to be pretty important on this champion then we can go hp or defense on the gauntlets on 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 this champion and then we're just looking for speed and accuracy and survivability so accuracy speed speed and accuracy basically looking for those sets putting them as my here's like this is how i built her right now i filtered i went to my uh priority stats I went to accuracy, high, I went to speed, I went high, and then I went to my stone skin, and I simply looked around to see what I had available to me, right? So I love the new priority settings inside this game. I mean, I guess it's, it's been there for a few months now. It's not super new, but I, I just love it. It's one of my favorite things that they've done since like the team set up customization, stuff like that. Uh, either way, guys, She's really cool. Really cool champion, right? We have uh, HP on the ring. We have defense on the amulet and accuracy on the banner. Accuracy on the banner and accuracy on the chest for me are going to be almost a must-have. Uh, they're going to be a must-have for the arena, right? Now, accuracy on the banner and HP or defense on the chest is totally fine if you're mainly using her in PvE, uh, right? In dungeons and Hydra areas like that. But if you want to hear her in the arena, you want to go all out accuracy. There's too much is never enough, right? So for that same reason, we went down the support tree and we picked up pinpoint, or eagle, excuse me, eagle eye and pinpoint accuracy as well. Ch charge focus, swarm smiter. We picked up Laura Steel, came down evil eye, came down master hexer and uh, eagle eye. Now I will say, Evil Eye, Eagle Eye. Didn't notice that there was a synergy there. Uh, sniper? You could use it on this champion. It's not going to make a big difference, but it will help uh, a little bit more dependability out of the block buffs on the A1, but I can't see... Yeah, I think it's better to go Cycle of Revenge and go with Retribution on this champion. You're probably going to land more block buffs anyway off the Retribution uh, and way more turn meter, obviously, with Cycle of Revenge, which is important on a Reviver. If you don't need all that accuracy, guys, and you're using her mainly in PvE content uh, and you don't need Eagle Eye, well, you have a couple options. You can go with Timely Intervention, increases champion's turn meter by 20% whenever an ally hero drops below 25% HP. This helps with any Reviver to make sure that they're there and ready for when they go down to pick them right back up. Uh, same thing with healers as well. Uh, moreover, you could bypass the defense tree totally and go with the offense tree and just end off at War Master for a little bit more damage optimization. Again, in PvE content for this champion. Uh, in the arena though, I don't see any reason not to go defense support ending at Eagle Eye. So that is my favorite build. And of course, you can still use this build in PvE content as well. Speaking of PvE content, guys, last thing before we get there. Blessing, I just go commanding presence with this champion. We get extra HP, some resistance, strengthens your team's aura by 7.5%. Hey, if you already have that on your team, you can go dark resolve on this champion. Uh, block freeze, provoke, and true fear. Or you can go with ind indomitable spirit. It, uh, block stun sleep and fear so those would be my options uh for this champion heck if you were using her in like i don't know in fire knight or something as a support reviver it's not you see a lot of her in fire knight but maybe go with phantom touch to get a double hit on the a1 i guess it depends magma ball interesting name uh Depends on where you're using any of these champions, right? At the end of the day, and the team that you have around them. If you don't need commanding presence, or you don't need commanding presence if you already have a uh, uh, an intimidating presence, for example, on your team or another commanding presence. But either way, that's how I have her built, guys. Let's go ahead and start out really quickly before we jump into the arena, do a few matches with her. I do want to start out in Faction Wars. We have 25 minutes left, so let's get, let's get on it, man. Clock is a ticking. Stage 21, Faction Wars. I have this team kind of put together... Ghostborn, just for some for, just for some debuff love here, make it run a little bit faster. We have Ryan as a reviver. We have Caden as a secondary reviver on the team. He also brings an AoE decrease attack. We've done a guide on him already on the channel. We have Coltart, and we have Painkeeper as well. 
I love Painkeeper. One of my favorite rares out there. It's funny that uh, Painkeeper, it's not really funny, but it's it's noteworthy that Painkeeper and Coltart, two of the best rares in the game, are in the same faction. So here we go. I have a very unorthodox Ghostborn build, if you were curious about who's in a shield set here. It's actually Ghostborn. That's because I use him on an Ice Golem Seer activation team as a debuffer. Uh, so I had the luxury of just throwing on a uh, throwing on a shield set to give another buff for Seer to take off on Karma Burn. However, it helps out in situations like this as well, right? So you can see that one turn stone skin. It's not really going to be a factor here at all. She's going to take, uh, take her turn and get rid of the stone skin before the enemies even go. But look at that, guys. The annoying Warcaster uh, block damage buff, not even going to be a factor. The annoying Valkyrie counterattack, unfortunately, is going to be a factor until we can get back around to the A2 again. <laughs> but, but it's really nice, especially against these pesky waves of Valkyries and Warcasters and the likes. It's really nice to be able to go in there and remove all these freaking buffs because it can be extremely challenging getting through Faction Wars without, especially in the mid game, without having a buff remover like her on the squad. So the cool thing is, even if we lose a Cold Heart here or anybody else, their big nuker, by the way, is already down in Errol, so I don't think we have anything to worry about here. But even if we do lose somebody, we have the two revivers on the team in Caden and Ryan the Conjurer. Caden's a really cool champion too. Uh, here we go. I'm getting through this second annoying wave, man. I'll come back to you when we get to the red boss. All right, guys, here we are at the red boss. Oh, Cold Heart, why you always burn your heart seeker on the uh, the minions? Go right for the red boss, girl. You got this. All right, so a bunch of true fears on my team. You don't love that, but we come in there. We still land the sweeping dismissal, albeit not a massive factor here. Granted, we still get weakened, and weakened on an AoE three turn cooldown can be, you know, somewhat difficult to come by in this game. So you can use Ryan the Conjurer. We're not going to show you here her, excuse me, in every single area that you could possibly use her in the game. Uh, but suffice it to say, if you're looking for a secondary reviver or even a main reviver, provided you can keep your team mostly alive, uh, she's a great option for a debuff, a buff remover and a reviver all in the same squad. It's it's certainly an interesting and unique skill set to have all in one champion, right? A buff remover and reviver. So that makes her pretty cool as well. You can see we lost Cold Heart there. She picked her right back up, 50% HP, 50% turn meter. She comes in there, launches her Heart Seeker, sign me up. That was a really nice moment of the match to show the utility that you can have in a reviver, and that's really gonna cause us to win this battle, right? HP very, very low, but I have confidence in this team. Caden does his thing, and we don't lose anybody towards the very end there, and we uh, we accomplish what we set out to do here. So again, Ryan's never gonna really be a standout champion on the stat sheet at the end of a battle, but she's certainly very, very competent in all the things that she does bring to the uh, battle. Uh, let me go to Classic Arena. All right, guys, here in Classic Arena, we have her going third in order with this team. The nice thing is, is I put Kaimar on the team because uh, either he or any AoE sleep champion, uh, Cornelia comes to mind. Uh, they work great on a team like this because uh, she, Ryan, is uh, similar to Madame Sarah. She's not going to wake up anybody who's asleep. So that's going to be fantastic. We can still CC the enemy team, thus not having to have our nuker and our debuffer, uh, you know, built super, super fast. So we have Hefrak on the team as our nuker here. We have Seal of Magic, so we can come right back in here and get rid of the uh, unkillable, come right back in and, well, kill him again, right? So that was really, really nice. That was a perfect battle to kind of demonstrate everything that Ryan, or the synergy, I should say, that Ryan brings to the table there. Uh, she came through with that buff removal, not once, but twice. And the cool thing is, with the power of nukers in this game nowadays, having to have ink or, or uh, decreased defense on every team, it's not like it used to be, right? You can get by with weaken. Heck, some teams get by with, with nothing, right? So uh, you can get by nice and easy. And I totally recommend running her with another buff remover if you have it, right? So we have Kaimar on this team. But if you have another champion, you get two shots at removing stone skin. Let's go against a little bit of a tankier team here with Krisk and Wither and, and Duchess and, and whatnot. So I think that go first teams are incredibly slept on right now, believe it or not. Uh, sometimes when the meta zigs, you got to zag a little bit, right? So, you know, provided 
even if you're going against a stone skin team, as I mentioned, you can still have success with a team like this, right? You get two shots at removing it. And again, we come right back in there and we remove everything yet again. And now the revival is not up on Duchess. So it's just going to be a matter of time here. And time is a ticking. Come on, come on. Come on, Hefrak. Cool thing with Hefrak is we need somebody to die. <laughs> he has that automatic Hefrak scorn, but we need somebody to die to activate it, right? And now we have to do one of these annoying things where we have to poke away at Wither <laughs> the crown forever because she's such a great healer. Uh, we need to do a guide here on Wither uh, at some point. But there we go. Hefrak gets the job done. Let's do one more battle here, guys. Let's do another tanky team. So I found this tanky team, guys, and it's similar to the last one. But again, I like going against Sir Nick because it shows how competent a team can be or how we can neutralize a team, I should say, uh, with a competent buff remover or two on the squad. So there she goes, not waking anybody up, setting up half rack beautifully. And there it is, guys. That's going to do it for the guide of Ryan the Conjurer. Great champion, guys. Hopefully you found this guide useful. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.